starting off this morning with Mark Miller's Draw the Circle Wide. And that was um, Middle Church, Middle Church, Middle, middle Khalid Church singing that. Um, I know we've been, we've been praying for them. They had a major uh, fire in their church. Uh, and in many ways, that is a sister church to us because they are an incredibly inclusive church in almost everything they do. So uh, I thought we'd start today off with Draw the Circle Wide, uh, one that I know in our church, we have stood around our sanctuary and, and uh, sung that song together. So good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this, uh, I guess today is St. Patrick's Day, yes. Uh, I used to live in uh, Pearl River, which was a very, uh, Irish community, um, and I know this day is always a very big day for uh, Pearl River, but uh, for some of you as well. So good morning, Saint, happy St. Patrick's Day, um, and welcome to Prayer and Devotion. It's good to be with you today. Good morning, Yolette and Donna. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Gail and Daniel. Welcome, holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Barbara. We'll be praying for your friend, Anne. Uh, today, holding Anne in prayer. Good morning, um, Priscilla and Renetta. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Augusta and Vinette. Welcome, holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Karen. You made it live. Yay. I'm glad you're here. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Celia. Welcome, holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Margaret and Genevieve. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Betty and Michelle. Welcome holding you in prayer. Good morning, Cyril and good morning, Shirley uh, in Pennsylvania. I'm glad you're here too, holding all of you in prayer today as we start the day. So our uh, devotion today comes from the scripture we're looking at is Luke 14 and the Great Banquet. So if you want to turn to Luke 14, we're going to start in verse 15. So Luke 14, verse 15, as you're turning in your Bibles, uh, good morning, Marilyn. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Cindy Stauffer, and uh, I'm blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. Lucia, welcome. Good morning. Holding you in prayer today. I'm glad you're here. Um, so today our devotion is entitled Grace Draws a Circle Around Everyone and Says We Are In. Grace Draws a Circle Around Everyone and Says We Are In. So um, Luke 14, starting in verse 15 uh, through verse 23, tells us this. One of the dinner guests on hearing this said to him, blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. Then Jesus said to him, someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, come for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first one said to him, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my regrets. Another said, I've just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and said to the slave, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, sir, what you have ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. Grace draws a circle around everyone and lets us know we're 
in. Thank you for rewriting that, Vinette. Amen. So today our devotion comes from Bob Goff's book. Um, i going to jump back over to the book we were in before called Live in Grace, Walk in Love. And um, he says, you learn about a lot about adulthood when you plan a wedding. At first, it's so exciting. You wish you could bottle it up in a snow globe. Engagement rings, parties, toasts. What's not to like? Everything is so blissful. And then you start to plan. Photographer, venue, caterer, tuxedos, a wedding dress. And it turns out getting married can be quite expensive. And the wedding ceremony is just the beginning. Next, you hear the cost of a plate of food. Corn dogs and fries start to sound pretty good when the reception in your imagination looks more like a room full of price tags instead of friends. And if the engagement survives all of this, you sit down with your um, sweetheart to make an invitation list. And you envision a reunion with your childhood best friends and college buddies. But the other person insists on all the second cousins. You have to make decisions between your fiance's mother's book club and your brother's girlfriend. And there are the people you really want to invite and those you feel obligated to invite. What started out as bonding time turns into a sad ranking of the people in your lives. God's family works on an entirely different system. God's planning a celebration for the whole world. And God's got an unlimited number of seats. There's no budget and no tab that runs too high. It's already settled. There's enough room. And there's more than enough room for everyone. We're wrong when we're tempted to think that we'll be a guest of honor with God just because we do something nice or sacrificial for someone. The corollary is just as wrong when we think we'll get seated at the table reserved for troublemakers and ne'er-do-wells just because we've messed up. Because Jesus stood in our place. Every seat at God's table is reserved for God's family. We just need to decide if we want to come. Don't rule yourself out because you think you messed up the celebration or the planning. Grace draws a circle around everyone and says, we're in. So the question that he poses at the end of today's devotion is, who is missing at your family table? Who is missing? Um, I started today off with Draw the Circle Wide, um, which came out of, he didn't write the lyrics, he wrote the music, Mark Miller. Um, but it came out of a, a mindset of the church that we're gonna decide who God, does, who God wants in and who God doesn't want in. And Mark, um, because of his race and because of his um, human sexuality, always felt that somehow the church was saying he was out. And he said, that is not how I understand God. That is not the God of this scripture that we read today. A God that keeps on reaching out. Now we have a choice to go. Friends, we have a choice. We don't have to go to that meal. But the meal is open for everyone. And sometimes I look at what the church has done and it makes me want to weep. It does, I do weep. <laughs> Because this is not 
what God is calling us to. God is calling us to have a table that welcomes all. And I get why we do it. You know, because if I can think the table is only meant for some people, that somehow makes me feel special if I'm invited. But it also makes me feel like, what will I do that will keep me from the table? You see, if, if, if the table is special because you are invited, it also means that perhaps something will happen and you won't belong at the table. But if the table is for everyone, if God is saying, I want all of you at the table, that means God wants you at the table too. No matter how many times you've messed up, God is welcoming you back to the table. And so friends, the church, that's us. It's not a building. It's not an institution. It's not a denomination. The church, that's us. We have got to do the work of getting the message out to the world that our God is a God of inclusive love, not exclusive love. That God is draw, drawing, drawing, let me get to that. I want to get the, draw, draw, uh, grace draws a circle around everyone. Grace draws a circle around everyone and says that you and I, we belong, we belong. And if we belong, then we've got to make room for others. And that's uncomfortable. Let's be honest. It's uncomfortable. It means that I may need to sit next to somebody who doesn't dress like I do or, or smell like I do. It may mean that I, I sit next to somebody who I don't understand. I don't understand the choices they've made in life. It may mean that people who have hurt me, that they need to find a place at the table too. I mean, what does Psalm 23 tell us? You prepare a table before me in the presence of those who I consider my enemies. It is not easy. I am not professing that this circle of grace is easy, but it is what we are called to do. And there are so many people out there that are longing for a place, longing to know the love that you and I have found. And so the harvest is plentiful. It's plentiful. There are so many people. We need to get to work. We need to get to work. So I'm imagining that circle uh, that we stood. If you go on our website, you can see a picture of our church standing around around the, the, the sanctuary. That is the picture of God's grace, drawing a circle around everyone and telling us that we are in, and so are they. So let us pray. Uh, it's good to be with all of you today. Um, I want to lift up Anne. I also want to lift up um, uh, Marilyn Kuna. Uh, this is this is the day her mother passed back in two thousand and seven. I know those anniversaries are always hard, um, but they can also be a blessing. So we're lifting up you as well today, Marilyn and all of you on the prayer call. I pray that you know just how much um, God longs for you to find connection. And if you don't have connection, I pray that you begin to feel like this is your family, uh, this time we gather. Uh, and soon, April 25th, we'll be gathering back in our worship space. And I hope to see all of you there as well.
So let us pray together. God of grace and abundant love, uh, we admit that too often we live believing that there's this scarcity out there, that there's not enough to go around that if somebody gets something that I want, there won't be enough left over for me. We, we live believing that if someone finds a place in the kingdom, then perhaps I might be booted out. And yet you tell us a different story. So help us to live that out, Lord, even when it's really difficult. Help us to be the church of grace that keeps drawing circles uh, that have no end because there is always more room at the table. Guide us when we go on paths that exclude and reorient us to your vision of the banquet. Lord, we lift up Anne today, who is in the hospital struggling with cancer. We lift up Gert and we lift up Jimmy, who are both home and struggling with physical, uh, with cancer in their bodies as well. We lift up all those in our world that have ever felt excluded, that ever felt, have ever felt like they just, there is no place for them. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to redraw those lines so that everyone finds a place. We lift all of this up to you, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So let's get to the work of drawing those circles of grace where everyone finds a place. God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Um, today at 12 o'clock, I invite you to join me for a time of centering prayer for about 15 minutes. Uh, it'll be on Facebook Live here. I'll also be putting it on our YouTube channel as well. So um, I hope you can join me at noon for a short time of of Centering Prayer. I will see you then, or I will see you tomorrow morning at 6.30. Have a blessed day.